name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, and man. This week we are celebrating the, the, the fast of people of Nineveh, and we read the whole book of Jonah. I'm sure you all know the story. We, we do it every year. Um, just, uh, I'll share a few thoughts about um, chapter 2 of that book, which is his prayer um, that he prayed to God when he was in the belly of the whale. So you all know the story. Jonah was a prophet, and God t told him, go tell those people uh, that to repent or else I will destroy them or, uh, or they will uh, receive the punishment of their, of their sins. Jonah, of course, had his own understanding of what God should do, like many of us. So he went the other way, and then there was a great storm, and then Jonah took, uh, took responsibility of his uh, decision and said, okay, I'm the one who caused this storm, throw me in the sea, and you all know the story. Uh, there was a major storm, um, and then they threw him. He was swallowed by a big fish or a whale, and he spent there for three days and three nights. In this uh, book, and I would encourage you to read it th throughout this week, is that we, of course, th there are multiple lessons that we can learn. One of them is we get to know how God views the creation, how God uh, looks at uh, those believers, and at the same time, those who are not believers. Uh, he looks at even uh, the animals, the nature. God has his own hands on everyone, and we see the danger of not being able to reconcile with myself and others and the world. Jonah, despite that he was a prophet, he spoke the word of God, but he did not have peace with those people who are different than him. And this is why he kind of went the other way. In this book, you will uh, get to learn um, how God's judgment also comes with God's grace. God, on, God does not only bears judgment on our wrongful uh, actions, but also he carries much, much even more grace than the judgment. And in this, we need to look at how we measure ourselves, how we look at the world, how we view those people who are different than us or who do some things that we don't understand or we don't even accept. Yes, there are wrongdoings, there are um, um, uh, lives that are not living fully um, in God's plan, but also there is much much grace, more than we can understand, even for those people who do not live in God's plan. Jonah being in that whale, being thrown into the sea, we can view it as God's punishment. And yes, Jonah took what he deserved. But at the same time, it was God's protection from the storm, God's protection from Jonah himself. God's protection that was the same punishment was the same vehicle that allowed Jonah to get out of the, the storm safely and follow his calling. Jonah tried to change the calling. Jonah tried to go the other way. What we may uh, see as God's punishment, what we may see as um, God's wrath can be also the same that is God's salvation, God's way of saving that person. Sometimes we go through suffering. Sometimes we struggle with our life, with our decisions. And we say, why God? Why did you allow this? Matter of fact, I brought this on, to, uh, on myself. But in the same time, God uses it use the same suffering, God uses the same struggle that I am facing in order to deliver me, to shape me, to help me grow, to
to help me learn new things about myself, about life, about him, about the world. In all things, we need to see Christ shaping our lives, even in what we perceive as punishment, in what we perceive as, why this? Why? I don't deserve that. Or, why do I, I only get that treatment and other people get away with it? There's a different calling on each one of us, but there is one common factor. God has much grace for you. God uses whatever you see as punishment, suffering, uses, as, uses it as salvation, deliverance, and a way to redirect your path, a way to clarify your vision, where to adjust your perception of yourself. In, in this um, chapter two, it is the famous Jonah's prayer from the belly of the whale. If you look deeper into each word, uh, um, you can find that uh, it is prayed in the last tense, in the, in the past tense. Meaning, um, any of us who face any like struggle, we pray right? Especially we pray on those times. We pray that God, please do this in the future. God, deliver me from this thing. So, so we pray either in the present tense or in the future tense. And we leave our prayers. We're not really sure of God really listened, would answer my prayer or not. We pray with little doubt. We pray with kind of I'm not really sure what's going to happen in the future. But Jonah here, and this is, again, put yourself in his shoes. Tremendous agony, tremendous uncertainty. He's in, he's in the belly of a huge, huge fish. And none of us could, could really understand how is that like. But imagine yourself in a, in a huge, dark room uh, with no windows, no doors. You're really stuck. You can't see anything. You can't hear anything. You are completely in this dark room or dark period of your life. All of us go through this dark period of our lives. I see no hope. I'm afraid. I don't know. I, I can't even trust those, those around me. Or there's no one around me. We do that. We feel that. Put yourself in this position alone, cold, wet, in a place that is, it's in the stomach of a fish. Imagine that with all, with everything uh, inside the stomach of a fish, right? It's really bad. I would pray in fear. I would be shut silent. I would just get ready to die, right? I'm not sure what would you do, but this is the normal human reaction if you are in this very dark, ugly spot of, in your life. But Jonah, when you look at his prayer, he prayed as God already has answered. He said that, and, and, and read with me, verse 2, and he said, I cried, this is in the past tense, I cried, khalas. <laughs> I cried out to the Lord, because of my affliction. And he answered me, how come? <laughs> the typical answer that we would expect from God is that we will get out and then we will give thanks. Thank you that you got me out. Thank you that you did that. But he, in the midst of his suffering, very ugly, dark place, he said, I already cried and he answered me. Out of the belly of the shoal, I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me, and your billows and your waves passed over me. And then he reflects, yes, I deserve that. The, yes, this is my wrongdoing. I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again 
toward your holy temple. So in the midst of his dark um, place, he accepted the responsibility and also he said that I'm looking again towards your holy temple. I'll be back. I'll be back worshiping you, correcting my path, adjusting my vision. I'll be back, not in the belly of the whale, but I'll be back in your holy temple. I do, I do not belong in this place. I belong to go back to your holy temple. This is my place. Whatever I'm going through now, yes, I accept responsibility for it, but you will not leave me there. And I thank you that you already answered, and you will take me back to where I belong, which is your holy temple. And he reflects on what's really around him. The waters surrounding me, even to my soul. So it's not even physical fear, but he also acknowledged that his fear went down deep into his soul. How many times you go through these situations or spots in your life when you're, it is not only your body, but your soul is faint. Your whole spirit is cast, is, is down. You can't even know yourself anymore. This is what we feel. And the beauty of the gospel is that God really shows us the human story. The human story of, of, of our life. God deals with you in every way that you can imagine. I went down to the moorings of the mountains, the earth with its bars closed behind me forever. We feel that it, we, we are done, there is no hope. I'm lost forever and, and, and you and me can know and can admit that many times in our, our life we said khalas, there is no way I will go out from this situation. But God's history with you shows you that you are never left in this situation. That there is always hope. There is always a new day. Yet, and again, he, he, he prays in, in the past, and this is past perfect uh, tense, right? It's uh, past participle. I forgot the English lessons, right? Yeah, but it's perfect. Uh, whatever, you know what I mean. Uh, yet, you have brought up my life. It is done. It is completed. It is a result that I already see and have received. You have brought up my life from the pit, O oh Lord, my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. And then at the end, <laughs> Again, he is looking at the finish line. He's looking at, as if he's already there. Verse 9, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I'll pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. It's a beautiful reminder that when you are stuck in such a dark place, pray as if already God has answered because he did answer. Pray that you're already out of this dark spot. Pray in faith that you already have received salvation. Thank God you have received. Thank God you are out. Thank God that you receive his salvation. And then it really and it happened, and God spoke to the fish. It vomited Jonah onto dry land. The time will come when you see God's deliverance. The, the time will come when you receive what you were promised from God. But while you are waiting in a dark spot, you, you literally have not received in your hand yet, praise him that you already received. This is the prayer of faith. This is a prayer of knowing who God is. 
God will not forsake you, will never leave you. God of, of mercy and grace. And he will say, although I will walk in the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. In faith, he prayed. So my hope is that as we stand now together and pray, and pray the liturgy, I know many of us are in some dark spots. Pray now that you are out of it. And thank God when you receive his body and, and his blood, which is the promise of life, you are already out of this dark spot because he has answered. To him all glory forever. Amen.